Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about Euler's theorem and we are going to do two problems related to Euler's theorem. So let's quickly take a look at the statement of Euler's theorem. It is saying that if a differentiable function u be homogeneous of degree n in x, y, z, that means u is a function of x, y, z which is homogeneous and has degree n and it also has continuous partial derivatives that means its partial derivatives are continuous then this equation involving the partial derivatives is called Euler's theorem or it is the result of Euler's theorem okay so just look at the structure of this equation x multiplied with the partial derivative of u with respect to x y multiplied with the partial derivative of u with respect to y and z multiplied with the partial derivative of u with respect to z will be equals to the degree of the function which is n multiplied with the original u function okay so this kind of an expression will be equals to degree times the function itself so this equation is called or this statement is called Euler's theorem all right now we have some quick questions to address the first is what is the meaning of homogeneous okay so this is the first thing that we have to understand what is the meaning of homogeneous Achha. homogeneous means let's say I have a function in terms of x y and z okay if I have a function f this is a function of x y and z now if this function is homogeneous then what will happen if I replace all the x, y and z by the variable tx, ty and tz then t to the power of some power of t is going to come out common and the function is going to remain as it is. Then if this kind of a thing happens then we say that this function is homogeneous and its degree is n. Let's take a quick example. Let's say I have a function a function of x y and z given by x y square by z minus 2 x y plus z into root over x y okay now the question is is this function homogeneous or not so what are we going to do we are going to quickly replace all the x y and z by t x t y and t z okay so if I replace this x by tx, I'm going to have tx. If I replace y by ty, so I'm going to have ty whole square divided by tz. Similarly, if I do the same thing, minus 2 tx ty. And over here, I'll be having plus uh, tz into root over of tx into ty okay so you can see an entire t square is going to come out common from this expression an entire t square so if I take a t square common from the first part if I have taken the t square common I'm going to have x y square by z minus if I take the t square common 2 x y and if I take the t square common from here then I will be having plus z root over of xy and as you can see that's the original function which has arised over here so we have t square f of x y z so that means I can say that this given function is definitely homogeneous and its degree is 2 okay so a quick way to understand whether it's homogeneous or not just look at the degrees of each of the functions okay x that's degree 1 y square that's degree 2 so degree 1 multiplied with a term having degree 2 that means the degrees are going to get added up so 1 plus 2 that's going to be 3 divided by z which is degree 1 so 3 degree divided by a term having 1 degree so the degrees are going to get subtracted so 3 degree divided by 1 degree is going to become ultimately 2 degree so remember this entire term is 2 degree now come over here x has degree 1 y has degree 1 so total degree of this entire term is again 2 again come over here 
xy is degree 2 and we put it inside a root over so that becomes degree 1 multiplied with z which is also degree 1 so degree 1 plus degree 1 total degree is becoming again 2 over here so if all the terms have the same degree then it is homogeneous and the value of that is the degree of the original function so now uh, Euler's theorem coming back to Euler's theorem so our function, whatever function we are dealing with, it has to be homogeneous. Okay, so we have to make sure this entire thing is happening. And whatever be its degree, it also has to have continuous partial derivatives. Okay, now questions will be given to you in a way that the function definitely has continuous partial derivatives. Okay, then this relation or this equation can be utilized. Okay, let's see how we can utilize this in a problem. Let's say I have this question. It is given that u is sine inverse x plus y by root over of uh, x plus root over y and we need to prove these two expressions. Okay. Now you can quickly see that the first expression is nothing but a direct uh, outcome of Euler's theorem. Okay. So let's see how we can apply Euler's theorem over here. First of all, I don't want to deal with the sine inverse okay because that's going to create lots of problems when I'll be trying to do the derivative part so I want to avoid this inverse trigonometry so in order to avoid that what we are doing let's say I'm taking a sine on both sides and I'll have sine u equals x plus y by root x plus root y okay now quickly try to understand is this homogeneous or not okay it's definitely homogeneous now those who did not understand just look at the calculation that I'm doing at the side over here okay again I'll come back to the original question just look at the thing that I'm writing I'm talking about the function x plus y by root x plus root y if I call this my f function if I replace x with tx and y with ty so I'll be having tx plus ty so f of tx and ty that's going to be tx plus ty by root over tx plus root over ty right so let me take a root over t common from the denominator a t common from the numerator so i'll be having x plus y by root x plus root y so that's becoming t to the power half and the original function has come back to us right this was the original function so I can see I have uh, expressed the function in this format that f of tx ty is equals t to the power half f of xy that means the function is homogeneous and its degree is nothing but half now you could have easily observed that over here in the given question if you look at this part numerator has how much degree x has degree 1 y has degree 1 so total degree in the numerator is 1 okay denominator has a degree half and degree half so entire denominator has a uniform degree of half so numerator degree 1 denominator degree half so 1 minus half that's half so half is the degree and the function is definitely homogeneous so this calculation was actually unnecessary but still if you cannot figure out whether this function is homogeneous or not then this is the proper way of dealing with it okay so I'm not going to do that part so now that you are sure that this is a homogeneous function so now we'll try to apply Euler's theorem over here okay so I'll just erase off this part and I'll continue with the original question okay so let me call this the function v all right so v is homogeneous of degree half right so I can say that here v is homogeneous having degree half right so I can apply Euler's theorem over here so using Euler's theorem
the direct result of Euler's theorem would be x. I am using Euler's theorem on which function? Remember, I am using it on the v function, not the original u function. Okay, remember, I am using it on the v function. Okay, my v might be looking very bad. I'll just improve it. Okay, so I need to apply Euler's theorem on the v function. So x del v del x plus y del v del y. Now there are how many variables in the question? Two variables, x and y. So only two variables are going to occur over here. Remember that in my Euler's theorem, if I don't have this, uh, let's say if I don't have this z variable, if I don't have it, then just this term would go missing from the Euler's theorem. Okay. If the uh, function is homogeneous of degree n having variables x and y, then only my expression will contain x del u del x, y del u del y. This term will be not there. The right hand side remains same degree into the original function. Okay. So that case is happening over here. I have variables only x and y. So x del v del x, y del v del y, that would be equal to n times, n means half over here, half times the function which is v. So I have applied Euler's theorem on the v function. But now see, the question involved the function u, not the function v. The function is u in the question. So I need to bring back u. Now how and u are v connected? Sin u is v. So that's the substitution we are working with. So we need to bring back u in the problem. So remember I have this that sin u is equals v. Now a simple uh, chain rule can be applied over here and I can write del v del x as del v um, del u into del u del x, right? That's a very simple chain rule I can use. So I can write this del v del x in this format. Similarly, I can write the del v del y as del v del u into del u del y. So the del v del y becomes something like this and the right hand side remains as it is. In place of v, I can write sin u, okay? So half sin u. Now what's the value of del u, not del u del x actually, what's the value of del v del u and the same del v del u over here? That I need to find out from this substitution. See, if I differentiate this line partially with respect to u, then my right hand side is going to become del v del u. I'm differentiating with respect to u. Then sin u derivative with respect to u would be how much? Simply cos u, right? So this would be cos u. So just remember, I have got del v del u value to be cos u. So I can just substitute that value over here and over here, okay? So I'm just going to do that. So I will be having over here cos u, I can take that common and I'll have x del u del x. The cos u has gone common from the other part also and the remaining term is y del u del y and my right hand side is half sine u, right? Okay, so I can just send the cos u on the right hand side and I will have x del u del x plus y del u del y and that would be half tan u and this was the first part of the proof right let's quickly check the first part of the proof it was x del u del x plus y del u del y equals half tan u that was the question and we have just got the proof to that okay so that's hence proved okay now there is a second part to the question the second part involves the second order partial derivatives okay so this is the second part to the question that we need to do this kind of an identity this kind of an expression is equals to something like this on the rhs Achha. now one small advice over here just remember this kind of a format okay this kind of a format it essentially looks like something like a whole square this something looks like a a square this something looks like a b square and this something looks like a 2ab 
it looks like a a square plus 2ab plus b square kind of a thing involving the variables x and y whenever you get an expression like this on the left hand side always remember it is going to come from the first proof okay first you need to prove euler's theorem normally using this expression we need to prove this one okay without the first expression we won't be able to do the second one so always remember whenever you have a whole square kind of a thing on the left hand side happening uh, then you need to take the help of the first expression the euler's theorem expression from there derive the second one okay so now what's the process of doing that there is a very simple process to it so we'll be continuing the second part from here okay just see how i'm going to um, go on from here i'll call this equation number 1 i will differentiate this equation both side partially with respect to x okay again i'm repeating i will be differentiating this expression both sides partially with respect to x okay so let's do that so differentiating one partially with respect to x so over here i have to do a product rule right i have to do differentiation of the x term also to do differentiation of the delu del x term also with respect to x so that's going to be a product rule so first derivative of x that would be 1 into delu del x plus now i'm keeping x derivative of delu del x with respect to x that would be del 2x del x2 all right coming to the second one derivative of y partially with respect to x obviously that's zero the Der derivative of y with respect to x we are doing partial it's zero plus now derivative now y will remain as it is derivative of del u del y this term with respect to x okay that will be a mixed partial it's going to look something like this del to u del x del y okay we are doing derivative with respect to x so with respect to x that term should be on the left and del u del y was already there so that should be on the right okay coming to the right hand side derivative of tan u that's sec square u and we are doing the derivative with respect to x so i need to have a del u del x right now i'm going to multiply this expression both side with x okay i'm multiplying this expression both side with x so if i do that i'll have x del u del x plus x square del to u del x square plus x y del to u del x del y equals half uh, six square u x del u del x so i multiplied the expression both side with respect to x now why did i do that so that i can create these terms right these terms are present in the question x square del square u del x square was present in the question so in order to create that term i multiplied with an x okay so let me call this equation number 2 now i need to create a very similar equation starting from equation 1 now i'm going to repeat the same thing i'm going to differentiate one partially with respect to y and then multiply that expression with y okay same thing just with y okay so differentiating sorry differentiating one partially Uh, with respect to y okay so now if i do partial derivative of the first x term with respect to y that would be zero plus now x will remain derivative of del u del x with respect to y that would be del to u del y del x remember you are doing with respect to y so the y term should be on the left the original x should be on the right coming to the next one derivative of y with respect to y that would be 1 and del u del y will be remaining plus y remaining 
derivative of del u del y with respect to y that would be del to u del y2 going to the right hand side half derivative of tan u that would be sec square u into del u del y now what do we need to do with this multiply both side by y okay so i'm multiplying both sides by y so i will have x y del to u del y del x plus y del u del y plus y square del to u del y2 equals half sec square u y del u del y and let me call this equation number 3 okay so that's my equation number 3 now we simply need to add one equation number 2 and 3 we are simply going to add them okay so let's try to add equation 1 uh, equation 2 with equation 3 okay so this term plus this term i am writing that straight away so i am doing two equation number 2 plus equation number 3 i am writing that so the first i am writing this term x square del to u del x square plus this term y square del to u del y square now just observe the terms i am marking uh, this term over here and this term over here okay if i add up these two terms you can observe that these two terms are quite similar but not exactly similar okay this is a mixed partial where with respect to x derivative is on the left with respect to y derivative is on the right in this mixed partial it's just the opposite okay always remember mixed partials are not always same these two values can be different okay it can be different it's not necessary that they will be same but in this question remember actually the, this information is there in the question but it's in a hidden format okay now what's the hidden format if you take a look at Euler's theorem okay no need to take a look at Euler's theorem actually uh, here only if you look at the question we are dealing with actually this function okay when i have taken the v function we are dealing with something like this okay this is the function that we are dealing with then we did some chain rule and brought back u into the question now if i call this v function okay then v function derivative of the v function with respect to uh, x and y that means a mixed partial x y first i've done the derivative with respect to y then with respect to x what i mean to say is del 2 v del x del y and if i find out del 2 v del y del x okay the two different mixed partials if you check it over here they are both going to be equal and hence if you do that with respect to u also it's going to remain same now why will that happen this happens because this function has continuous second order partial derivative okay this the second order partial derivative that we are finding out it is continuous if the second order partial derivatives are continuous if at least one of them is continuous and if the single partial derivatives exist okay remember this if the single order partial derivatives exist that means uh, just these partials that we have found out if they exist and if any one of the mixed partial if that is continuous if that is a continuous function then the other mixed partial will definitely exist and they are both going to be same okay so if one of the mixed partial exists or if one of the mixed partial is continuous okay not exists it has to be continuous if one of the mixed partials is continuous then the other one has to exist and both of them has to be equal okay so in this case if someone finds out this value and if someone finds out that value they will see that both are same so hence with, if you do that with respect to u just a chain rule substitution you will see again both are same with respect to u also so that's why in this problem we can treat both this one and this one these two mixed partials to be same we can treat them to be same because 
both the u functions the second order partials and the mixed partials they are continuous okay in this given problem the u function has continuous second order partials and the continuous second order mixed partials also so that's why both are going to be equal so now if both are equal if i add them up it's going to be plus 2xy del to u now since both are equal i can write del x del y also i can write del y del x also so del to u del x del y okay equals now the remaining terms are this is the term remaining in the first expression this is the term remaining in the second expression so i'll have plus x del u del x plus y del u del y so that's about all the terms on the lhs now going to the right hand side so on the right hand side you can see i can take half six square u common from here on the rhs part so if i take half six square u common i'll be having x del u del x plus y del u del y okay so i'll just do that directly if i take uh half 6 square x 6 square u common i'll be having x del u del x plus y del u del y correct okay so x square del to u del x square plus y square del to u del y square plus 2 xy del to u del x del y plus so i can do one thing i can send this value on the rhs and take it completely common with the same very term present over here okay so what i can do is i can take x del u del x plus y del u del y common on the right hand side then i will be having half 6 square u minus 1 now this value we have already found it out in the first equation that means in the first part of this question and as far as i can remember it was half tan u so you can see that this value was half tan u and we had already found that out okay so i am putting the value over here which is half tan u and you can see the left hand side it's completely matching with that of the question so nothing to do with the left hand side let's just concentrate on the right hand side now so i have half tan u half 6 square u minus 1 okay now if you look at the proof of the question the proof involved a little bit uh, trigonometric uh, terms in terms of sin and cos uh, so it was minus sin u cos 2 u by 4 cos cube u so i need to basically break down the tan and the sec things and make it look something like this okay so remember minus sin u cos 2 u by 4 cos cube u so let's try to get that so i'll be breaking the sin and the sec square part so i'll have half uh, sin u by cos u and over here i'll be having 1 by 2 cos square u minus 1 right so if i do some lcm over here so that would be 1 minus 2 cos square u by 2 cos square u and 1 minus 2 cos square u if i use trigonometry that's going to be cos 2u so sin u acha uh, i think that's a minus taken common it's 2 cos square u minus 1 that's uh, cos 2u so we just need to take a minus common from there so it's going to be minus sin u cos 2u by 2 and 2 and 2 are going to be multiplied this 2 and this 2 and it's going to be 4 cos cube u and that was the required proof okay so that's the required proof of this question and that's how we deal with euler's theorem problems